Hi, thanks for being a part of the Ocean Debris Art Revolution. I'm Helen Bellino from Artopia and we're here at the Phillip Island campus, which is on uh, the Victoria's Bass Coast, the south, very southern part of Australia. My inspiration for starting this Ocean Debris Art Revolution was twofold. First of all, we moved here about a year and a half ago and I started finding these little pieces of plastic dotted along the high tide mark along the beach where we go for our daily walks. First of all, you didn't really notice them, but if you look carefully, you'll find them just sort of invisible amongst the seaweed or just lying along the ground. There's not masses of it like this. You just find them here and there. I just started picking them up and putting them in my pocket because who wants to have this dirty waste material on their beautiful beaches? As time went on, I, I started looking at this material and thinking about what I could do with it and sort of almost like liking it and thinking, oh, well, this is, you know, these pieces are really interesting. Sometimes I found really quirky things and I thought, you know, that could be really like interesting to use in an artwork. There's all sorts of bits and pieces. So I did start to incorporate them into my artwork. Um, you can see some of my earlier pieces here. I am predominantly a mosaic artist, so I was working in, in the mo mosaic mediums such as smalty, which is a traditional mosaic material, and just bringing in a little bit of the debris as just part of the materials that I use. Uh, since then, I've progressed to sort of working with pieces that are all ocean debris in a more painterly fashion. So there's a whole lot of interesting things and inspiration that comes from working with materials that are new to you. It's, it's quite exciting. It's also exciting because we're getting this waste out of the ocean and hopefully inspiring others like you to do the same, to collect it and to raise awareness that to other people saying, this is made out of ocean debris. Um, I found it in the ocean. So if you go to the beach, please look for it and pick it up. Please be careful of what you, you um, put into the waterways. And let's prevent our oceans from getting clogged up with all this horrible rubbish. So that was um, you know, one of the reasons why I, I did think of starting this Ocean Debris Art Revolution. The other reason is we do have a not-for-profit arm of Artopia called Artopia Angels. And we do quite a bit of fundraising and we're supporting some really impoverished families in Bali and helping them with their animal welfare work. So I'm always trying to come up with ideas for new fundraisers. So I thought maybe we could do something with this ocean debris and turn it into a fundraiser, which I did. And uh, we started selling these little packets of debris and um, doing these tutorials to go along with it. So little packets of debris or a bigger kit if people want more guidance. So that's been really great. And that might be the reason why you're watching this tutorial at the moment because you may have purchased some of this for our fundraiser. So thank you very much. If you haven't, then please jump on board with our fundraising uh, quest because it's a really great cause and every single cent of the money that we raise through here goes straight to our impoverished families and our efforts over there. So if you would like to make a donation at the end of this tutorial, if you enjoyed it, there is a link on our website and we will be very grateful for that. So I'll get back to that a little bit later on. But let's go over and have a look at the cl closer look at the debris now. So here's some of the debris that I've collected. Um, when I go for my walk, I just take a bag with me and pick up anything I see. There might only be a little bit every day, something like that, maybe more, maybe less, depending on how high the tide has been and, and how strong the currents. What I do then is I tip it into a sieve and give it a shake. That gets out all the sand and other bits and pieces and I'll leave that to dry for a while so that, that sort of sand comes out and the smell of the ocean. Then I go about sorting my debris. So I'll take out the big pieces because I may not use them in my art but I like to keep them, most of them, um, because something might you know, come of it later on. I might make a big work of art, somebody else might like to use them or you can break them up and use them in different ways. So this is sort of the, the, the kind of things you find on the beach, dog toys and these kind of summer sandals and wetsuit things. Things from trades, tradies that have gone 
you know, that maybe careless, carelessly left or left washed down the drains, lots of sunglasses and swimming things, beach toys, cans and bottles, things like that. So I'll separate them out first. Then I've got my mixed deb debris here, which I like to then separate down into, into categories, like ropes and twines, which are awful things to have in our ocean. They tangle up fish and birds and sea mammals and you know, they're really horrible. They can get wrapped around beaks and stop the birds from feeding and all sorts of things. Then I separate out the caps and bottle tops. There's lots and lots of these. You always find caps. Metallics, like um, cans and broken pitcher cans. Balloons, very nasty to have in our waterways because they do choke the sea creatures. Sometimes you find um, pieces of ceramics. You find glass, broken bottles, which eventually get worn down into the sea glass, which is quite attractive. Um, you can find these kind of things that come from fishing lines. You get a lot of these. These kind of sticks are actually not um, lolly sticks, but they're actually the things you clean your ear with, e ear cleaners, and they're the sticks that are left behind. There's a lot of those, and they're really horrible. Sometimes you find little treasures. I call them little treasures because I might get inspired, they might sort of inspire me in an artwork, these little fishing head, fish heads from lures, you find quirky little things, um, like things like this, little toys, and just weird little shapes that uh, spark a thought or an imagination. There's a little hand, things like that, and I might think, oh, I've got an idea for that in an art piece. So I keep them separate if something sparks my imagination. There's also these things called nurdles, which are very sinister. They are the building blocks of the plastics manufacturing industry. And if their filtration system isn't very good, these escape down the drains into the waterways and end up in the ocean and all along the beach. You can't really even see them and to collect them, it's very challenging. But, you know, we really need to be aware of those and so that um, manufacturing industries need to be sort of challenge to, to make sure their filtration systems are um, improved. So there are some organisations around which help with that. This is a fantastic one, it's called Tangaroa Blue. So I've been working with them and some of their volunteers on Phillip Island. What they ask us to do is actually tally what we collect because that will build up a picture of just what is going into the ocean. Sometimes something can be picked up, something unusual, and tracked back to its source. And sometimes, if they've got this is evidence to say, okay, well, this manufacturer has used plastic um, things, say, in their ear cleaners, when maybe we could lobby them to use another material, bamboo or cardboard or something like that. So it really is a very much a means for change. So it's really important. So it's great if you can join Tangaroa Blue or some other society that works in your region and get on board with that as well. So once I've uh, done my major sort, then I will start separating it down into colours, into finer colours, because I find that quite inspirational to look at those different colour um, colour piles, because it does give me ideas from my artwork, just like any other materials that you use for art. So this is when I start thinking of it, this stuff here, not so much as rubbish that's come from the beach, although of course it is, but more as an art medium. And that's really what I'm pushing with this art revolution, is to start thinking and finding ways of using this material as an art medium instead of your more regular art mediums like paint or other materials. Because that way we're reusing and recycling we're also raising that very important awareness. So before you actually start using your art materials in your artworks, it's important that you do give them a bit of a clean. So just pop them into a bucket of water that has some disinfectant in it or essential oils or something like that that's going to kill any nasty bugs that they've been, if they've been sitting around in seaweed or on the beach or something like that, you just don't know. So give them a bit of a wash scoop them out and lay them on some newspaper to dry. Once they're dry, they'll be ready for your work. 
So hopefully I've already inspired some of you and your imaginations are starting to run wild and thinking about all the crazy things you can do with ocean debris and how you can incorporate it into your artwork. But it's really empowering to have a few technical skills under your belt because that can often demystify any processes for you and help you go forward and experiment and play and to create things. So I wanna go through the technical side of, of working with ocean debris now. So this, is, this part of the tutorial is the hands-on part. So first of all, let's talk about substrates. Now substrates are the back, backing board or item that you're going to be using to create your artwork on. So you can use canvases like this kind of thing, like I have done with the Great White Egret. You can use boards of all types. You can use cement sheet. You can use the unglazed side of large tiles. On this one, I've actually put a rendered coating on it. We do have another YouTube, YouTube tutorial um, showing you how to do rendered coats. So you might like to look at that too if that idea excites you. You can use Marmox, which is a lightweight cement based substrate. If you're a mosaic artist, you'll know what that is or you'll be able to find out about that. Um, you can also use timberboard and things like that. So really the substrate is um, not really that important, but the type of glue you use to adhere to that substrate is. And I'll go into that in just a moment. These are the tools you might need for working with your ocean debris. Um, the main one really is just a pair of scissors and these. These ones are only if you're going to be cutting up some of the sea glass, you will use a glass nipper or some of the ceramic pieces, you would use a ceramic nipper. But mostly for the plastic pieces, a pair of scissors and a pair of um, wire cutters uh, can be useful. You might not need them at all. A pair of tweezers if you're doing fine work and a little blade and a toothpick can help you as well. So not really much in the way of tools. The reason why you might need these tools is because you might like to manipulate some of the materials. So by that I mean change them from what they already are. Some of the materials are perfect just to use as they are. So you can see in this little bird that I'm doing at the moment, most of these little pieces of grey and white plastic are as, as I found them. But if I want to shape them a little bit, then I have to use, say, this big piece here. It's, it's not really what the shape I'm looking for. First of all, I'll just try to tear it with my hands. Sometimes they just break up in your hands, like that one is breaking up really well. And then you do maintain this rough edge, which is quite nice, rather than a crisp cut edge. But say you find it doesn't um, break with your fingers, it's a bit tough, then you can try scissors and try to cut it and you can shape it in any shape you want with the scissors. Sometimes they're a bit brittle like that one is and they just break apart so they don't actually do what you imagine they might do, but that's okay. If you've got something that's a bit stronger, and sometimes these bottle tops can be like that, and you want to manipulate these and break them into different shapes, then the wire cutters are quite good. So you can just place it in like that and clip. And I like um, using bottle tops in this way because you do get these nice um, bendy pieces. And I really like using those on things like fins. You can see that where this, this fish here, these fins, that's what they're made out of. They're made out of these bottle tops where the thread is goes around. And I've put them like that. So you can think about ways of using the materials. And really to do that, what you need to do is have a look at the debris that you've got. Whether you've um, collected it yourself or you've bought some through our fundraiser, have a good look at it and study it because that will sort of give you a bit of a direction of what you might want to do with it. Like say, for instance, that. You might want to cut that up or you might want to use it whole. So it's, it's a little things like this. You might use it as an eye. You might layer things and use that as, as an eye with, an eye with a middle piece. So, um, you know, it's just up to you to really play with the materials, first of all, and get, get a little bit of a familiar with them and the ideas can start coming to you. Now, if you do want a little bit more guidance, then I do suggest that you pick up one of our kits because in there you've got everything you need to get started to make something like a fit, this fish, or a butterfly. 
So there's two types of kits. There's a fish kit. You get two fish patterns in two different patterns, copyright free, that you can use for your inspiration. Or you can get two um, butterfly. You can buy the butterfly kit and you get two different butterfly patterns for your ins inspiration. So that's quite a good starting point. You also get all the other bits and pieces that you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of these fishes as the demonstration using what's in the kit. Now you might already have these things or you might have purchased them separately. So you can do it in different ways. But for now, for this demonstration, I'm going to work with the stuff in the kit. So let me show you step by step how to work with the ocean debris. So if you bought the kit, you'll find in there a pattern and a piece of recycled plastic which you can lay over your fish. If you haven't bought the kit, you can just do this with your own ideas. There's also enough fiberglass mesh in there for at least two, two patterns. So you can cut that in half. Then you lay your fiberglass mesh on top of your plastic. So I call it a bit of a sandwich here. You've got your um, pattern followed by your plastic, followed by your fiberglass mesh. Then I just stapled all three layers together, just in the corners. A few staples here and there. Some people stick it together or use bulldog clips, things like that. But I find stapling is quite easy and effective. Then you're ready to do your mosaics. Now using fiberglass mesh as your substrate instead of a board is fantastic. Because once you've finished, you can cut it out and it ends up looking like this. So the glue has oozed through the mesh and it's become a really stable and firm artwork. And then you can stick that onto your larger substrate. You can stick it onto your canvas or your board or whatever you decide to do with it. I really like doing that if I haven't decided what I'm going to do with my things yet. I might put them together as a larger mural, something like that. <clears throat> so this is how we work on the mesh. In your kit also, you'll find two types of adhesives. The first one is Artopia's own sculpt and stick, which is a really good quality um, cement based white adhesive. Um, it, it really is our sculpture medium that we've developed, but it also acts as a really good cement based adhesive. So you, you, use, you can use that. And also this glue, which is a fantastic product, it's called Prep Multi Use Adhesive. It is Australian. If you're in the United States, then the equivalent would be uh, MAC glue. So that's a really good one. You can use this one in entirety for ocean debris because this is the best glue to use or your MAC glue to stick plastic. But if you want to do a little bit of embedding like I like to do, then a little bit of a thick adhesive works um, really well in combination with one another. So now I'm just going to show you how to mix up the adhesive. So you start by wearing a mask because with any cement based products you need to protect your lungs because you don't want to be breathing in those little fibres. So just while you've got the loose powder hanging around, pop on a mask, mix yourself up a little bit at a time. Now our, our glue you add two and a half parts powder to one part <clears throat> liquid but because I'm just making up a little bit and I'm good at guessing you can just do it by sight and pop a little bit of liquid in there and give it a good stir. So the liquid that I've added to this sculpt and stick powder is just water and I'm mixing it through. It does sometimes seem like you need to add more water but, but don't be tempted because all of a sudden it will turn into a lovely paste. So you can see it's starting to get to that creamy consistency, a nice thick paste. It's a little bit stiff, so I am just going to add one tiny drop more water, that's all it'll need. So what you're after is a nice thick toothpaste consistency. And once I've mixed in all the powder, like now, I don't need to wear my mask anymore. I can take that off because it's only breathing in the fibers that you have to avoid. Then I'm going to color it. Um, you don't have to color it if you want a white adhesive, but usually, unless you're working with, with stark whites, you probably do want to take the whiteness out of it. 
So in your kit you will get one bottle of our wonderful artistic tints which can be used to tint grout, um, uh, glues, paints and other coatings. Um, you can choose your colour yourself if you send me an email. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to make sort of a yellowy toned fish this time. So I'm going to use our bright yellow um, tint. What you need to do first of all is give the bottle a shake because sometimes the liquid and the <clears throat> gel can separate a little bit. Now, a little bit goes a very long way, so be careful not to put too much in all at once. I actually just start with a toothpick and just dip the toothpick into the bottle because that might be all you need, especially if you're just after a pastel tone. So I've just put a little bit of toothpick colour in there. And it's already turned a soft yellow colour. Now if I'm going to be working with these tones for my fish, that might be all it takes. But I think I might introduce a little bit more colour because I might also pop in a little bit more vibrant yellows into this fish. So I'm just going to make my yellow colour a little bit brighter. The idea of colouring your adhesive is so it becomes invisible. And if your adhesive is paler than the colours, it's more noticeable. I think that might be a nice tone to use with this colour palette. <clears throat> Pop your lid back on because a little bit does go a long way. If you, if you spill it, it will go everywhere. You'll know about it. All right, now what you do is you get another cup and a um, Ziploc bag. I always use plant-based ones because they're a little bit more environmentally friendly than your other plastic bags. So always keeping the environment in mind. Then I pop the corner of this plastic bag into the a cup and fold it over so I've made a little triangular shape well there. This is how you make a piping bag. So now I'm just going to plop that adhesive with the coloured colorant, coloured adhesive, into my piping bag. Shake it down into the corner. You can make up more if you're going to be working for longer. If you're only going to be working for a short time, just mix up a little bit at a time. Then I put an elastic band around the end. That just holds it all nicely together. Take my scissors. Cut off this. And also just then cut off the tip there. So if you squeeze gently, the glue will come out and you can pipe your glue on then. So it's, now it's time to have some real fun and start playing around and laying down some of my pieces. So have a look through what I've got here and start making some decisions. <clears throat> Maybe try a few things before I decide. Maybe I'll try that and that for the eye, thinking that might be a bit high. What else is here? Um, Maybe this, something like that. Um, you can see I'm just kind of thinking and playing and that really is the way to go about doing things. Just having a little play, having a little fiddle until you come up with something that you like the look of. This is an interesting piece. I think because we've got this arc here, maybe that could sit there like that. And then I might go back to using that piece and one of those. Maybe that could be quite a fun eye to start with. Okay, so now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay down this glue in the area where I want my pieces to go. And you can see I'm using this sort of tapping, smearing motion because that way the glue is really going through the fiberglass mesh. Now the glue is making a nice bed to embed those things in, but cement-based adhesives don't stick to plastic very well. So that's when now I'm going to put a little bit of the multi-adhesive, or if you've got MAC glue, on top of that and just dab it around a bit. That way you're going to get the proper adhesion to the plastic. So it is important that you use both. And then you can press it down. Oh, I'm gonna slip that underneath first. So I will pop a bit more of the cement of the prep just there like that. On this one here, I'm just going to pop a dob of the prep and use my tweezers to drop on that little fishing tackle glow-in-the-dark thing. 
or whatever it was before it became my fish eye there we are and that's an interesting look so I'll just continue with this process um, let's lay down a few scales now and I'll show you the process there so let's have the scales coming out from underneath this eye section so I'm going to lay down my glue I'm just going to work a little section at a time now that glue is really good because when I go down to lay my scales and I'm going to start with a pale color because that'll give it a nice contrast with the um, against that yellow you want to slip them in like this <clears throat> to give a bit of height and then the next one might go underneath just sort of overlapping and that's a nice way of working but like I said before that's not really going to stick very well to the plastic so once I start making decisions about where things go I can just pop a little bit of the prep multi adhesive in there as well before I press them fully down so that's that's how you go about doing it so now I'm just going to take these little pieces and start overlapping them of course it's always sort of a bit self-conscious when there's a camera in your face and I don't quite get into the zone like I would if I was just working on my own so things might not go as well as you usually do during the filming process so it does take a little while to get into the zone and you can actually just pull them off and start again if you don't like them so just continuing with that process of putting down the two types of glue one to prop it up and if you do want to prop it up a bit more you can actually get your piping bag and pipe underneath the pieces to help prop them up I really like doing that because I can manipulate them more and move them around and that sort of thing so I'm quite happy with the way that's going if I was to continue I would continue piping underneath with that thick glue and then pop some multi adhesive in there use my toothpick just to make sure the adhesive is well well moved around and covering everything and then continue sliding in my scales maybe I'll start bringing in a deeper color this time I might graduate these colors from light to dark as it goes along the body of the fish so it's really as simple as that with this bird that I've been working on over the last few days I actually am just experimenting working just with prep multi-use adhesive without the thick glue and I'm becoming very frustrated because it slides around a lot and I find that I can't get control of the pieces as well so I am I will go back to um, using the thick glue but I can't change now because it'll change the look of what I've already done. So sort of make a decision before you start whether you're going to use the thick glue and the prep or just the prep. But I think using both glues does give you definitely an advantage. So as I said before, you can start thinking up cute ways of using bottle tops and things like that. Getting those nice uh, pieces that come from the inside of bottle tops that you might use for your fins and your tails and those parts that have lines or you might use that strapping that washes up a lot you can split the strapping and you can sort of use it in a line effect to have to give different different um, textures different looks in different parts of the fish or whatever else you're working on so those these glues and this technique is really the main thing that you need to empower yourself with of the how to do um, how to do it and how to work with ocean debris everything else really is just you experimenting and coming up with some ideas of how to create a whole work using this technique or just to incorporate it into your existing artwork so I hope I've inspired you today and that um, you know you, you're going to give it a go I really really would love for you all to give it a go and also to send us pictures of what you make now we do have a Facebook page called Artopia Mosaics and Sculpture, which you, we'd love you to follow. We also have um, a Facebook group called Artopia Community Group, and we'd love you to join that too, because there you can post pictures of what you're doing, ask for advice, 
and the community will will um, you know help out in that way and you can encourage one another so I'd really love you to jump on that Facebook group so we can see what you're doing and also to send us some pictures by email if you don't use Facebook so please jump on board with the Ocean Debris Art Revolution send us your ideas send us your finished artwork and if you do if you would like to make a donation to help us with our fundraising we'd really appreciate it so you can go to um, www.artopiamosaics.com that's our main website where you'll find the links to everything that you need thank you so much for listening and i hope you have fun working with ocean debris bye from phillip island <laughs>